Let us pray. Dear Lord, in each generation you call forth those to follow you and carry the message of your redeeming grace to those around us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to your call and teach us to listen for your leading voice. Make us eager to respond to your call and grateful to carry on the work of your church through the gospel of Christ. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. Caller ID. It's a marvelous invention, don't you think? I'm sure most everyone I have every one of you has it either on your cell phone or on your home phone and it's a way to filter out unwanted calls it's a way to filter out those unwanted voices you have no desire to talk to we all get those constant and unsolicited phone calls from telemarketers and it is so annoying it's gotten to the point where if I see a number flash up on the screen and I don't recognize it, I don't answer it. And I figure that if someone wants to speak to me, they'll leave me a message and I'll get right back to them. But I just want to avoid hearing that voice on the other end give me an alert on a credit card that I don't even own. And folks, I really do need your prayers. Because my automobile warranty has been expiring every day for the last seven years. And do you notice the phone usually rings when you're in the middle of something? The middle of eating or the middle of reading or the middle of watching a TV program. It's just so distra distracting, don't you think? And it's a shame that we have to sacrifice the once cherished courtesy of answering the phone so that we can speak with the party on the other end, only because of those unwanted voices. But then the phone is not the only time that we try to avoid voices. Have you ever had a tiring day at work and decide to go to bed early, only to lay down in your bed and be unable to sleep because of all the thoughts that keep floating around in your head. You lay there and the more you think of going to sleep, the more that you stay awake. It's like hearing these different voices in your head. That's going on talking about family and finances, your work, your health. They're unwanted, unwanted voices and they seem to call out to you and keep you from falling asleep. And hearing those voices is just so annoying. And you just want to turn them off, but it's just not that easy. Well, today we're going to be talking about voices, exploring voices. Except they're not the unwanted voices of telemarketers. Or those unwanted nighttime voices that keep us awake. They're not the voices of the past that speak condemnation for past offenses or voices of days gone by. The voices we're going to talk about today are the voices that are referenced in the Bible. More specifically, the Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel and from the Gospel reading in John. In fact, I need to correct something I just said. I said we're going to be exploring the voices, plural. But we're going to be exploring one voice. The voice of the living God. My, best, my message is about God calling. Because that is part of what the epiphany season is about. The revealing of Christ, the Son of God. And in the light of epiphany, God calls us to, a spiritual, to be spiritual activists. To proclaim 
and the true revelation that Jesus is the light of the world. Now see, in our lifetime, God will speak to you. God will call you by name. And when he does, how are you going to respond? What's going to show up on your caller ID? Will you run from God? Will you recognize his voice? Will you jump and jump right in and gladly do his will? Well, the Bible gives us three examples. Excuse me. The Bible gives us three examples of different people's reactions to hearing God's voice, his calling. First, there's Jonah from the book of Jonah. Now, many of you are familiar with the story of Jonah and the big fish. God spoke to Jonah and called him to go and preach to Nineveh, a huge city plagued with very much wickedness. And he was to become a prophet to encourage the Ninevites to change their ways, to repent. And Jonah heard God's voice, and he refused. He knew what God wanted him to do, and he knew where God wanted him to go. But he chose a different path to follow. He ran from God. And instead of dedicating himself to the mission at hand, Jonah rejected the call and hopped onto a boat heading in the opposite direction toward Tarshish. Now God wasn't too happy with this, and he sent a storm to pummel Joseph's ship with violent waves and heavy winds. And the sailors couldn't control the direction of the ship, and all seemed hopeless. Some felt that the direction that, the, that God was displeased, and that they pointed the finger at Jonah, who claimed he had fled away from the Lord. So Jonah voluntarily asked to be thrown overboard. But God's plan was more than throwing Jonah overboard. He wanted to show Jonah who was in control, whose plan it was. God quieted the wind and the waves, and then, Scripture tells us, the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah prayed to God, and the fish spewed him out onto dry land, and then God called Jonah to go back to Nineveh to fulfill his plan. He says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim it, pr proclaim to it the message that I give you. Jonah reluctantly went, proving God would not be deterred by a man refusing to follow his voice. Jonah was a perfect example of turning his back on God when God called him to do his will. Which brings us to example number two. From the Old Testament lesson in the book of 1 Samuel, the young boy Samuel heard a voice while he was sleeping. The Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. Now thinking it was the voice of his master Eli, young Samuel got up and went to him, willing to do his master's will, but Eli didn't call him. It wasn't Eli's voice. This repeated for three more times before Eli realized what was happening. And Eli, being wise, knew that it was the voice of God calling Samuel. So he told Samuel to listen to what the Lord says. And when Samuel went back to sleep, the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Here we see a contrast between Samuel and Jonah. Where Jonah turned away and tried to avoid God's calling, Samuel had to discern the voice who called out to him, thinking it was his master's voice. Whoever's voice it was, he was willing to please. And when he found out that it was God calling him, not Eli, he answered with the simple statement, Speak, for your servant is listening he obeyed the calling and he grew 
in the Lord to become a great prophet. And he let his light shine brightly and illuminated Israel with the truth that God had revealed to him. You see, God had a plan and called out to Samuel, and Samuel worked with eagerness then to fulfill that plan. Which brings us to example number three. From the Gospel of John, we see Philip. Where Philip listened and then served, the disciple Philip was even more energetic. Philip was one of the first to follow Jesus. And our Lord spoke to him and invited him to join him on the road to Galilee. But notice what Philip did first. He ran to Nathanael and told him the good news. And he said, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. And about whom the prophets also wrote. The word found is important here. Because it tells us of Philip's state of mind. The Greek word, ediski, which is where we get the word eureka. And it, this wasn't just a simple discovery by Philip. He was excited, eureka, I have found him. Philip was a brand new disciple. He may not have understood what he believed yet, but he put his faith in Jesus just because of two simple words. Follow me. Philip, knowing the prophecies of Moses, knowing the prophecies of the Messiah through Moses, simply couldn't keep it to himself. He was busting to tell somebody. And he quickly told it to Nathaniel. So here we have three different responses to the call of God's voice. Three different ways to show their faith. And they're examples that Christ doesn't call us to sit around and sit on our hands in our pockets. When he calls us, he wants to use us. So let me ask you, friends. Which example are you? Are you a Jonah who was called to preach? He looked at his caller ID and seeing who it was, ignored the call. Eventually, he unwillingly obeyed God and allowed his light to shine in the city of Nineveh, which was a dark city. And do you know what happened in Nineveh when he finally obeyed? The dark city repented. Or are you a Samuel who was called to serve? He listened and found God out. Samuel checked his caller ID, which displayed caller unknown. So before he answered, he had to get some direction from Eli before answering it. And, when, and by answering God's call, he became a great prophet to the Israelites. He became a great preacher to a nation, and he became a great example for us. Or are you a Philip? who was called to follow Christ as one of the disciples. He looked at his caller ID and it said Jesus, God in the flesh. And notice he didn't hesitate to answer. He chose to let his faith shine. He eagerly broadcast Jesus to Nathaniel and offered the news of the Messiah. He chose to get the good news out as soon as Jesus called his name. So now that I've pointed out the three examples of answering God's call, how do we recognize God when he does call? What shows up on your caller ID? Do we hear? Do we listen to? Do we recognize God's voice calling to us? How does God call us? And what is he calling us for? Well, according to scriptures, there are five important ways we as Christians can be guided to God's calling. And each one builds on the other. Number one, we recognize God's calling through his creation. God calls us out through all that he has made and all that happens. His creation testifies to us. 
His fingerprints are on everything. He calls us to know and to trust him through the magnificent beauty of his creation. Through nature, God is real. Paul writes, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made the creation of the world, so that people are without excuse. We see the perfection of God as the creator of all, and we are to believe. It reinforces the omnipotence of God. He is the all-powerful. And through nature, we look to him for the source of all good and perfect things. Which brings us to the second way that we can recognize God's calling. It is through the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, the good news about his goodness, his atoning death, his forgiveness of sins, his everlasting mortality. That's why he calls us to come to him and receive him for eternal life. When we look, him, look to him to verify his calling, scripture says he does not deny. Romans 10, 13 through 15 tells us, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the, how then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent or called? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We must listen in order to believe. So God's word through us, through his servants, freely calls human beings to come to know him, trusting in the gospel. And by trusting in the gospel, we know that it's Jesus calling us. John 10, 27 says, My sheep listen to my voice, and they follow me. So Jesus is telling us that he calls us out through the gospel to preach and to teach the good news of God's grace to the world. Which brings us to the third way we recognize God's calling. It is through our baptism. In baptism, we become a new creation. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. With baptism, he calls his children to move from death to life. He calls us his children. That's us. He calls us in faith. Those who are miraculously humbled and moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to turn to him become new creations. Mark 16, 16 confirms the importance of hearing God's call for us in baptism. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Which brings us to the fourth way we recognize God's calling. It's through our obedience. God calls us to a life of holiness and thankful obedience. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. And may he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when the, our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in obedience in order to please God as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus Christ to do this. Be obedient more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the lifelong process of discipleship. In which we, through obedience, become formed into his image. We become Christ-like. And when we obey God and follow his commands, we trust that the voice of God is near. 
Jesus, in his own words in the Gospel of John, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have in my father's, kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Which brings us to the fifth way we can recognize God's calling. And it is through our service. God calls us by tailor-making us so that we serve him in specific ways. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God is calling you, my friends. And he's doing so by progressively revealing to us the process of living our Christian lives. Our calling is what we are made for. The specific good works which God has prepared beforehand for us. Our understanding and belief of God's calling for us grows into existence as we mold together all five of these ways. Looking to God through his creation. Trusting in the gospel. Becoming the new creation in Christ through baptism. Obeying the commands of God and serving others through the good and perfect talents God has given us. This is how our true life unfolds. This is how God speaks to us and leads and guides us. And more importantly, he encourages us to trust in his word, to go to him in prayer, and to surround ourselves with fellow believers in order to correctly identify him on our caller ID. Then we can receive his voice to witness the good and perfect calling God has for us. We can be eager like Philip. Eureka! God calls each of us, each and every one of us, to be disciples of Christ and to do what we can to further his kingdom. Some of us might be reluctant to get involved because we feel we might not have much to offer in the way of talents or gifts. But that's not so. Think of the three men earlier. A reluctant prophet, a child servant, and a fisherman. And as a result of their response to the Lord's call, God was able to equip them to further his kingdom. And that's what he wants for us. I'm sure they had no idea what they were getting into when they responded to our Lord's invitation. Yet the efforts of these down-to-earth common people resulted in Christ's church coming to fruition and bringing people to repentance. Now, Pastor Kevin and I have been called to do what we can to uplift the church and to proclaim God's redeeming grace to those around us. And we are all called as we gather here in God's house today in response to God's invitation and his call to be a part of his kingdom, not only to worship him, but also to serve him. My friends, the basic thing that happens in a Christian life is that we learn to hear God's voice, that we recognize God's voice, and that we accept his calling for our lives so that the whole world knows that the life-saving, loving, forgiving gospel of Jesus Christ. So check your caller ID. Answer his calling. And listen to his voice. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep our hearts and minds focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.